Hello there and welcome to another MCI Studios tutorial. This is part three um, and this is the mixing process. Uh, what you have in front of you is exactly the same tune we've been working on from the beginning of these uh, uh, of these tutorials dealing with recording, mixing and uh, the next one is going to be mastering but today we're looking at mixing and uh, one of my favorite stages so let's delve straight in we're kicking straight off from the last tutorial dealing with the recording process so we have in the effects boxes here all the effects that we had <coughs> uh, left from the last one um, we have all these tracks here routed through the bus and we worked out how to do that in the last tutorial so let's get straight into it. What we want to do now is break each track down. So we're going to solo each track, <clears throat> get the levels right uh, independently, and then we're going to start soloing two at a time and getting that sounding right and balanced with another track, and then soloing another one, and then another one until basically we're building up all the tracks so that when we play them all together, they're all nice and balanced and uh, you can hear each track nicely. So let's start with the guitar. Now we already, we've already added the guitar rig for setting to give it that um, distortion effect that we were looking for. So let's go ahead and solo this guitar track and, uh, and see how it sounds at the moment. Okay, that's good. Um, what we've got though is the guitar, um, especially if you're using headphones at the moment you'll be able to notice this a lot better, but you'll notice the guitar is central in the mix, which means it's coming not to the left or to the right, it's, it's in your head, you'll, you'll, you'll hear the sound and it'll be central. Now, our vocal is central as well, so if we solo the guitar and the vocals, take a listen. You'll notice they're both taking up the same space in the mix. They're both central. And this is kind of a problem that you will run into time and time again when you're mixing any kind of track. It doesn't matter what kind of style it is. The trick is to find each instrument its own space within the mix, <clears throat> um, which can sometimes be just as simple as panning it slightly more to the left or panning it slightly more to the right just so that it's not taking up the same space as another track. Um, the main benefits of doing this is that when you listen to it through headphones, or especially for some good speakers, is that um, none of the tracks are mumbled and they're, they're all clear and you can make them out. You, you don't have to squint your ears to make out each track. You can just, you just you can, you know, if, you, if you're concentrated, you can just hear each track very clearly and that's what you're trying to find here in the mixing process so let's just solo this guitar now and work on this what I'm going to do is a, a nice handy trick when you're mixing is if you come up here into the timeline where it says bar one two three four here if you actually just click one of them and start dragging you'll notice that this grey line appears here now this is dependent on your um, snap to grid uh, options here. At the moment mine's set to whole, which means when I dragged it out, it snapped exactly to a whole bar like that. Uh, and then what we're going to do is once you've done that, is come up here to this little icon here. Now this is set loop points to selection, which means when we click this, it's realized that we've just highlighted that area of the mix and set a loop point from there to there. So when we're listening to it soloed and we're mixing on it, we're just getting a nice steady stream of this one track and we don't have to keep stopping and starting it when we're mixing. So what we want to do is find this track's own space within the mix. Now a good trick I like to do, especially if you're using a single guitar, um, is to try and make it sound as if there's 
two. Now, if you're recording metal, especially metal um, uh, tracks and songs, you'll notice this a lot. If you've got uh, a two guitarists in, in, in any band, the trick really is to pan one hard left and pan the other hard right. But if you're only working with one guitar, try and do this. See if you, see if you like this effect. Right click in the effects box, come down to audio effects and come down here to a plugin called channel tools. Click this, drag this out. And what this is going to do is we're going to use, now I don't tend to use presets, I, I like to fiddle and faff with all the settings that come with the program, but this, I actually start off with this and then kind of tweak as I need to. If we just uh, if I play this guitar track and then select this um, setting, you'll notice the difference. Did you notice that? It's widened the mix. It's taking that signal and it's almost essentially panning it but it's kind of panning it both left and both right it's like it's splitting the signal and sending it through both the left and the right so it's widening that mix now if we listen to if we just get rid of this now and listen to the guitar and the vocal now You'll notice that it's much better it's not sitting um, they're not both sitting in the same space and the guitar now has got its own space within the mix and uh, it's sounding pretty good okay now I kind of like that so I'm gonna leave that for now and I'm because I've only got um, 15 minutes unfortunately but because um, we could spend hours on this um, and I'd love to as well I love I love doing this but we'll come to the bass and we're gonna solo this bass now on its own and let's have a listen. Okay, that's not too bad. It's kind of a bit dull, um, hasn't got much life. So we're going to right click in here, audio effects, sonitis effects, and the equalizer. And again, we're going to select a section and loop it and uh, let's see what we can do with this okay if you can still hear me it's kind of muddy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two sliders here two and three I'm going to slightly just drag the second one here about five and then this one to about there and then we're going to up it in the mix slightly just up the gain to about there you'll notice that here is actually the peak indicator here and we don't want this to go into the red so as long as we're kind of minus 12 area we're all good okay that's not too bad yeah I like that another th another trick as well is remember you're playing the bass off the kick drum of of the drums which means the kick drum and the bass will be fighting for space within the mix. They'll be both taking up that same space. And it tends to be central within the mix. Because um, if you uh, imagine a drum kit, the kick drum is the center of, the, of that drum kit. And the bass in a mix tends to be there as well. But what we're going to do is come up here and select mix. And to the pan here, and just do a nice simple, I don't know, 20, 30 percent uh, pan just to the left just to knock it off course and knock it off that central point um, that's being um, taken up by the kick drum here um, so hopefully we'll be able to hear a bit more definition so have a listen yeah 
that's not too bad. It could it could do with maybe a compressor um, to kind of level out that signal, but uh, we haven't we haven't really got time to do all this. Um, so I'm going to have to skim through quite a bit, which is really annoying because we're on ten minutes already. I've only got another five minutes left. Okay, vocals. Let's solo these. Dark night, down the road I go again. Now we kind of added um, some slight equalizing in the last two tours when we added the um, the equalizer that we were using specifically just for almost like a mic pre, just by upping it, upping it in the mix and then using the Boost 11 to squish it back down again as a compressor. A lovely technique. And then we added a bit of a delay. But what we're going to do now is kind of, it's a bit quiet within the mix. So we're going to use this Boost 11 just to up it slightly. Okay, I like that. Okay, we're going to work on the drums now because the drums do need quite a bit of work. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is solo the um, the drums, um, and then I'm going to start fiddling and faffing, and just um, I'll kind of keep the screen going so you can see what I'm doing, um, and then we'll stop and talk about it later. But we haven't got enough time, so I'm going to have to be quick. Um, Okay, so just uh, take a look. See what see what see see what you think. Okay, so what we've done there is we've added a very quick um, preset on the PX64, so the percussion strip. Um, we added slightly bright, and this is what it's like without and without the other the other effect we put on. This is without any effect. Dark night. And then this is with the the PX64. Dark And then with the reverb, the lexi lexicon pathion reverb. Okay, everything seems to be nicely and um, nice and settled within its own space within the mix now. <clears throat> um, there is some more stuff that we do in the mastering process. I want to look into. I might do a part two to this. Actually, part two to the mixing. Yeah, I will do it. There's not enough. There's just not enough time in 15 minutes. It's just not long enough. I want to go into um, V vocal on the vocals and some more effects that we can do it within the bus. So look out for part two of part three, if you see what I mean. Um, and then after that, it will be the mixing process. Uh, the um, sorry, the uh, mastering process. So I'll see you next time. Have fun. I'll see you then.